Yes, I can see the structures. All right. I, I know the rooms in uh, uh, I, yeah, they, are, they are very different. They are, different yeah, they are very different. You they don't recall this one in particular? Both, no. What I'm saying, uh, they are nearly the same, but they are different because okay. when we in our where we put our face top and our toothbrush, right. it was a small place. Like there's like a cupboard, something like this little cupboard okay. in it. Okay. And then on the other side, it was Mr. McPherson one, okay. where we changed clothes. Okay. So this one was not there. This thing is new. Okay. Yes. Um, so as I understand it, the evening of the 4th of February, the only thing that was very, very strange was the fact that the windows were closed for the first time, there were voices, there was a lot of commotion, and the keyhole was blocked. That's your recollection. Not that the keyboard, not the keyhole was the, blocked. Yes. It, it was not locked. It yes. was blocked. Blocked by police officers. Police officers. Um, they speak I think like you this. are about to demonstrate to us. Can you demonstrate what you saw? No, what happened initially as I was standing on the window. Yes. Just standing on the window and looking at it. So I could see just a few cells. Mm. Not this side. Right. These doors were blocked. People were coming to mm. and they blocked the, 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 the people. Yes. They blocked the studio. So as I saw one gentleman also coming to close windows and close windows. and I moved away because I saw that he's coming to my side too. Then he, did that too, and those windows were the only source of air that you got fresh air, am I correct? Yes, or underneath the door. Underneath the door. Or underneath the door, or that little peephole. I see. But yes. no, they have nothing further for this witness. Thank you, Mr. Gould. Sir, I appear on behalf of Dietlifts and Fainter, two police officers from the security branch and I will be asking you questions uh, regarding this and first of all I, I do recognize that it was a very dramatic time in your life and also the history of South Africa and it is not easy to testify about it. So I do sympathize in this instance. So I however have to put to you my instructions from uh, that he denied that he was ever involved in any assault on you. You want to comment on that? Uh, no comment, sir. And secondly, that he denied that he ever threatened to kill you. Um, it's not true. So the, if, if I may ask, the charges that you have laid in Pratia and that for which you the testifying Pratia was uh, Mr. Dietlifs an accused in that matter? No, he wasn't an accused. So you, at that stage, did not make any allegations of any torture or assault against Mr. Dietlifs? No, I didn't make uh, any, any allegations on the basis because at that time, to me, I knew that I would have never won the case because I did not see him, because also it's just that I, when he asked me several questions in about uh, that night when I was tortured, is that uh, I knew that automatically he'll be in, uh, he'll be in Protea. So, okay, let me, can I, can I explain? Can I explain further? Okay. What happened is that when the, the police came to pick me up, Trollip uh, and the group, it was quite strange. Uh, 
that they just took me to the cells without interrogating me. Uh, there was no agency of interrogating me. So I stayed for a while until Trollip came to my cell and told me that he's taking me to a farm. And that farm is good. That's where I'm going to talk. So all related questions that Trollip asked me or that the group that was there that they asked me, it was only that I made a statement in John Foster. I've never made a statement in Protea. So the point is that usually when we are tortured and so on, you write a statement where we are being tortured. And then, but at that time I was left without writing a statement until I wrote my statement in John Foster. The, the, you, you identified certain police officers that you alleged was involved in your assault at Pratia. Uh, no, it's just in Proteus I've said when I opened my eyes, the only person I could see, I saw immediately strode it, but he just slept me and slept me and then uh, they had to they put a paratlava on top of my head. So what I'm saying, the only time that I suspected that uh, uh, in my belief is that uh, Dead Leaves was there because he kept on asking me the question, same questions that I was asked there. Thank you very much, sir. So, furthermore, as I've indicated, I appeared for Fenter. Lieutenant Fenter, Luke Fenter, and uh, it is further my instruction, sir, to, to put to you that he admits that he interrogated you? He admits, yeah. yes. He it's possible that uh, because in my statement, his name is there, yeah. and um, yeah. Further, he admits if, that he assaulted you. Sorry. Further, he admits that he assaulted you. Or oh, then it means he was also in pro theater. And further, he admits that he insulted you. Sorry. That he insulted you. Okay. And that he used derogative language towards yourself. Yes. So, if we can turn to your evidence in relation to Dr. Agat, yes. uh, between the 25th of, of January, when you said you saw Dr. Agat on the 10th floor, or when you said you saw Dr. Agat, did you see him again before the 4th, between the 25th of January and the 4th of February? Um, if my memory serves me well, at what stage did I say that I saw him in the, uh, in the, in the, but, uh, the place where, uh, in the, the place where we do exercises, that I got into the room where, uh, we, Perhaps you can tell us about seeing the, is it the exercise yard? Yeah, the exercise yard. I'm trying to look at, uh, at uh, the time when we physically, I'm talking about physically when I met and uh, uh, what? Uh, mm -hmm. so There's a day when I saw also he went and took the jersey and he showed me marks. I don't remember what he did. Okay. The marks on his hands. Sorry, my lord. Go to paragraph 21 of your affidavit. 21, okay. On the morning, on the, yeah, that's a third. Yes, I think, yeah. You, you testify that you're a light sleeper and that you are inquisitive, that when you heard the keys rattle, and on being unlocked that you went to look to see who was passing. Was that something that you that you generally do when you heard the keys at the, the gates opening? 
that you go and see at the window who was walking past? Yes, for me is that I have to to admit now, my Lord, to say why I did that. All the time is that uh, I've been involved with uh, lots of people inside the country and outside the country. At that point in time, uh, also I was involved with people nationally. So they were bringing people from uh, Eastern Cape, Natal, and so on, in John Foster. So it was to my interest to say who's in, who's not, so that I can prepare myself in my head. So also who's arrested from outside, if there is anyone that has kidnapped and so on. So all the time is that I'll be not sleeping really, because, yes, I'll put it. So I wouldn't be, I'll call it in that level, I'm a light sleeper. And uh, did you by yourself try to orientate yourself in relation to time of the day? You know where we stayed, that we were honest, is that uh, the lights are always on. Because we're staying in this place where if you look at John Foster, there's no sun that comes in. There's no, you don't know what is. It's, it's like at a, we call it a casino. When you get into a casino, you don't know it's during the day or it's at night. So the cells where we are, it's like that we don't know it's during the day or it's at night. So to us, it's just the same process. But you knew more or less when you were given food? Yes, with food. Uh, right, with food. What time do we get food and what time we don't get food? That will be the real time, yes. And from what you could observe through the window, did you sometimes just see Dr. Agate walking past your your, your cell? Yes, interacting yes. with him? In most, no, I couldn't interact with him in my cell. Yeah. Because in my cell, as I've said, the windows were bulletproof. Uh, I couldn't even shout. I could shout at night, we shout. We could shout at night and talk to each other from the other side. But during the day you can't shout because there are there is movement. Yes, but could you see him walking past? In other words, I could see yes, I could see him back. walking past. Yeah, yes. I could see walking past because at that time he will be walking with his. Uh, there are two. There are. I'll say I'll see him walking with McPherson, or I'll see him walking with uh, uh, Chauke. Yes. And in that week, uh, the week that ended in the first on Friday, for the first of that week. Did you see him going out every day? Uh, that week I, I remember I just saw him, him um, yeah, as I've said on the third, that's the day I'm saying physical, I saw him, that's the last day I saw him. But you didn't see him otherwise just walking past without any interaction? that you just see him being escorted in that week? No, that, on the third. On that week, during that whole week, they say it started it's at the first. The first? Yes. No, I didn't see him at that time. So you, you so only, in that week, the first, the second, you didn't see him, the third you saw him, and then on the fourth, you, you testified of seeing something happening. Yes, no, what, what happened on the, on the third is that I was, doing my exercises in the corridor, in the, in the corridor in John Foster. Uh, then I saw him uh, going into uh, the office where the place, or uh, what do you call it, where we put our uh, 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 and our toothbrush. So, that's when I, I went through, I went in to talk to him because Mr. McPherson had gone out and I went through to, to talk to him uh, just to ask him some questions and hear how he is and so on. And then when he, he turned his back, I greeted him and he turned his back. Then he showed me his, uh, uh, the, the, what do you call it? The, yes, marks in his hands. Then I knew automatically 
that they don't really take shocks. Yeah. And the, the night of the, of the fog, what you explained the um, The ninth. The fourth. Ninth of the fourth of February. Fourth yeah. February. Yes, the fourth of February. That's when I went to the industry. He was entering the. He was entering his, the place where he's taking his. Then I, for one, I had gone in. I was. I followed him. Yeah. I've gone into that. That was the third. I understand your evidence correctly. That was on the third that it happened that you, you met Dr. Agat in the office of McPherson, where in that property room. Mm. On the third in the morning, it's about seven. One and I met him on the third. Yeah, that was on the third. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Now I'm going to the fourth, the next day. Mm -hmm. I don't remember seeing him on the fourth. <coughs> now, on the fourth, you remember that you got your food, your your dinner. Mm your late food, mm -hmm. in the morning you got breakfast and then later, about 4 o'clock, if I'm not mistaken, you were served your your dinner, correct? Yes. Now, up to that stage there was nothing on the watch that had happened. That yes, on the 4th, on the 4th, uh, if you, my memory serves me well, uh, we got the dinner, we, we, we ate, and then somewhere, uh, I'll say three, four hours later, that was when that, that's when the commotion started. In so, so from your observation, it was about three to four hours after you received your dinner. Yeah, three to four hours after. <coughs> that. that would be more or less three to four hours after four o'clock in the afternoon. After yeah, five o'clock we get out at five. Yeah. At five. Five. five six, seven, eight, nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Yeah. About nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Yeah. The evening. Yes. Now, you, you said that people, can you just explain to the court, first of all, what draw your attention to the window on that evening at about 9 o'clock? I had the lock, the lock, yeah. but uh, I didn't take it much on, I didn't, uh, uh, I went to, to, to look, but what happened as I, as I went to that the window, I just saw a movement of lots of policemen coming in, and some as they came, as I was standing, as they came, as they were passing, moving from this side, going to towards the Agat side, and also some of them came back also and they moved. Then at a later, I'm sure within that period at uh, an hour or two, that's when they closed the window. That's when they started to close the, the peep, the peep uh, where they were peep. The police would stand there, they were standing there, and then the, the, the what do you call it, the windows were closed. So for about an hour, as I understand you, people were walking up and down the fashion. <coughs> Yes, it was, yeah, it just uh, the police, there were two men, there were many. Many police officers. Many police officers. And also uniformed branch police officers? No, it was a, a private, lots of private people. Not uniform. Really. The uniform policemen will be the ones who will always watch us at night, will come at night. McPherson was during the day, during night it was SAPS. That time of night, at 9 o'clock in the evening, the uniformed police would have been in control of the cells. Yes, they were. No, they, they, I wouldn't say they are in control of the cells. The people who are in control of the cells usually are SAPS in the evening. So I'm talking about the ones who open the door. Uniform to look, sorry? Uniform branch police. Yeah, uniform. They're the ones who open our door and look at the during. I'm talking about that after I was eating and so on, because the security branch policemen, they go home. Yes. So normally in the evening, the, the uniformed police officers would patrol in yes. the villages? They'll patrol, but they usually they sit in the offices, but they'll patrol at some stage and just look at us. 
and you close the door and so on. Or a time to keep. Yes, but sometimes they open your doors, the, yes. the solid door. The solid door, then they stand on the grill. They stand on the grill and talk to you. Yes. And that night, can you remember when, whether they patrolled? That night is that they were not, there was, uh, there was no time of, uh, I think there was no time of them patrolling. Because they were quick, 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 and they were fast, you know, they were moving faster. All of them, they were moving so fast and so on. Uh, rushing towards the mill side and coming back and so on, and that's that. But at a later stage, then that's when they started to stand on the doors and they start closing windows. If those windows are closed, can you see through them? No, you can just see movement, but you wouldn't see anybody. For example, you would not be able to identify a person's face. No, no, you can't, because it's frosty. The glass is frosty of that window. Then you have the first the bulletproof, yes. and then the frosted glass. <coughs> yes. And you say at about nine o'clock, or shortly thereafter, about an hour, hour let's thereafter, say ten o'clock, all the all the windows were closed. I, I could, yeah, they started, I could hear, I saw the, the, the next to me first and others that way, and they were closed, even mine was closed. It was the first time. Yes. And could, so there was no way of you knowing what was happening outside in the passage? None, really none. You could hear movement, but you, you could not see anything. Yeah, movement and discussion and talking, people moving and discussing. And could you hear what they were talking? No, I couldn't, because at times it's that uh, they speak Afrikaans quickly at times. So I wouldn't hear very well what they were saying. And how long did this last, that everything was covered up? It lasted until uh, the next shift of police, which the security branch came in, and then... And do you know when the... is it the next shift also for the uniform police? No, it's not the uniform, it's a security branch. Uh, mm. Did they... Uh, uh, I'm, I'm not sure that I understand your answer, sir. Um, okay. Did it last for another hour, or...? Oh, you hours. talk about what? what After happened? they closed the windows yes. and stand in front of the, the peepholes. The peepholes? Yes. No, it went on for long, for a long time. It went in on for Not a long time. To the next morning? Yes, to the next morning. To the next morning. morning yeah. Now, sir, did you, uh, did you sleep at all that night? No. Sorry? You did not sleep? No, I did not sleep my night. And I'm asking you this, sir, you did not fall asleep after, your, after you had your dinner, and it, is it not a situation that you were woken up by these sounds? No, I don't, usually I don't sleep at, the, at that time, uh, because, you see, in prison it's like a loitery, so you sleep at 3 o'clock at times, you sleep whatever time that you sleep. So at that time, is that, uh, no, I wasn't asleep. But I was just very, I was just, uh, it was my interest at that point in time. Why? What is happening? Why they have taken over? Why it, what is happening? What did I do to be doing this, uh, this movement and uh, pushing the windows? Did you I, get any keys opening the cells? No, they didn't open the cells. No, 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 no cells were opened in the time that you observed? Yes, because even if they opened, let's say the side of me or where, I wouldn't hear. Because it's on that side place, I wouldn't hear. But on our side, I didn't hear when they opened it. But also I want to give you this story. In, I used to be in a, a prison here in called Johannesburg, it's called number four. We used to call it number four. But I don't know if you call it Johannesburg prison because this is prison too. Sun City. Not Sun City, old one. Four. The four, yeah. We called it number four. So I used to stay also in single cells there. 
So one night, prisoners fought and fought amongst each other. So what happened is that uh, uh, they had to come and open, open the, the prison. Uh, their movements and everything and whatever that uh, took time and so on. And uh, uh, it was not far from my, my cell that somebody that had passed away. So I have an understanding in terms of what they usually do to come to bring uh, forensic people. Uh, in order to come and see how he died and so on, and as they had to remove the body and so on. But I couldn't also see, but I know that it had, had happened. So in, in, uh, in, uh, in John Foster, since I've been there in John Foster several occasions, that thing had never happened. What had happened that day, on the 4th to the 5th, and uh, yeah. and did you to understand your evidence correctly? You immediately, when you saw this happening, you thought something happened to Dr. Neil Agnes. Yes, I thought because those times are his times of coming back or being taken out, and also because I saw him with the marks. I saw him with the marks uh, of uh, his mark. Besides that, also, I saw him on the 25th being also beaten, um, uh, beaten on the 20th at, uh, at the 10th floor. So all those things to me came into my mind to say, uh, Neil Eggert is just. I just concluded that he had passed out. It's a gut feeling. Let me just tell you, it's just a gut feeling. Was there any communication in relation to Dr. Agat on the toilet telephone that night? No, Dr. Nils Agat toilets, they don't form part of the telephone. The parts that form the telephones are this that I'll give it to you. It's, um, it's from B, B1. D1, 9, and 10. This one stay form. And uh, this one, uh, 26, 20, uh, B11. And those are the ones that form part of the telephone. It's the line, all on the same side on the line. Then. No, on the both sides. <coughs> so both sides. For example, uh, B10, B11, B10, B8, B6. B4, B2 will be able to communicate with each other on the line. Yes, and also B9, and also, and also B, with B, the opposite B9, cells. B7, yes. yes. Because the pipes of the sewerage, yes, they go together. Yes, and uh, they flow to that side. Yes, mm. and uh, that night, you said there was communication on the toilets, on the toilet telephone. Who couldn't? We couldn't because there was a, a big movement. We usually talk, but that night we did not. And uh, the next morning, uh, when the police officers left, were your gates opened and the windows opened again? I, I have to be honest, uh, I like to say that I did uh, see when the windows were open or when uh, uh, I'll be lying to say that that day I saw them open. Were you taken to the police station then? And did you hear any or see any other person being taken for interrogation? No. Would it was know? just a policeman moving uh, up and down. Did you try to speak to anybody that night? 
during the night time to find out? Did you did you make any attempts shouting to people or, or inquiring from any person as to? Uh, I I shout I, sh I shouted to. Um, I don't remember quite well. I shouted it maybe Tozamile, Tozamile Quata. That I shouted to him to say, uh, I, I suspect that Neil is dead. When was that, sir? Early, early morning, when it was a bit quieter. After the police had left already? Yeah, after. But uh, I shouted, for, uh, I called each other on him. Code names. Yes. And when you, were you when the police left, did you then go and communicate on the toilets? No, no, not right. on the toilet, on the on the door. You only shouted through the door. So yeah, through the door. Yeah. And and you you then shouted and asked. No, I told him that I suspect that uh, something that had happened. I'm sure Dr. Nida get his dead. And did you get any reply? He was shocked, in a way. He was shocked and we kept quiet because the police were still moving again. Not moving in the way that they used to move at night. So it was a tense, it, that day was a tense, tense day. Did you, it was did you observe uh, the body of Dr. Agat being removed through the passage? No. By stretcher or by any format? No, I couldn't. Because why, as I've said, they closed the, the, the windows. In my, in my mind, in my mind, what I've made up, what I was making up, in my mind, I was making up a situation where they brought him, but they brought him back to his cell. He may have died. I believe that he has not died in that cell. He has died somewhere. Uh, in terms of, that's my belief. No, that's, that's just speculation. Yes, speculation. You've yes. got no I'm evidence or did not see that happening. Yes, but, but always, yeah. as you are saying that, is that, <laughs> I don't know how to explain to you. I'll tell myself that I don't want to go to this corner because something may happen to me. Then it's true, then somebody will be shot there at that time. Like a that gut feeling? Uh, sorry? A gut feeling? A gut feeling, yes. I had that gut feeling. To say the body of Nilaket has been moved in uh, while he's there, and then to be brought there to also to do a stage, to stage his death. And then from there to remove him again back and so on to wherever that they took him. That's how I view and looked at it. He did not die. That's my belief. He did not die in his cell. They brought him being dead. So you, just to get clarity as well, you, you never stood on top of a toilet to try and see this, what is happening? No, I can't stand on top of the toilet. I'm tall enough. I'm saying the windows were closed. The toilets, can you say, was the toilets on the street side of the cell? No, his, his side you could see the street. Yes. On my side, the toilets, it's, as I've said. It's opposite the gate, opposite the entry? No, as my, my, cells, my cell was in B6 or B10. Yes. My cell. Yes. So, where my cell is, there is no, we can't see the cells that I'll give you the numbers right now from B2 to B10 and B11. You don't, I'm not sure about B11. From B10 to B1 until B10. B1 to until 10. Uh, B, B, no, sorry, B2, B, B4, B6, B8, B10. Those cells, you cannot see anything outside. But the toilet, what I'm asking you, sir, is the toilet on the back wall? On the back wall. On the back wall. Yeah. In other words, on the wall that is not facing the passage, but opposite the, the grill, the back wall, in other words. As you yeah, it's say, at the back. Here I am. Here is my cell. Here is my door, the one there at the, yeah. the yeah. on the wall. On the wall, the back wall. Next to the wall, back wall, yeah.
Do you know how many detainees were in the cells at that stage? Yeah? The top of February. There were many of us. There were many of us. I know Keith Coleman was there. Uh, Keith Coleman was there. Um, Susan Jigelan was there. Tozamile Kweta was there. Eric Ntonga was there. Uh, Oriet Van Yerden was there. Um, These are names of yeah, people. If, that if I can ask, there were, in other words, there were quite a few people in the cells. Yes. And were they also interrogated at that stage? Yeah, they used to be not at that time, but uh, before they were interrogated. French Chicane was also there. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just worried about why you thought it was Dr. Were there not any of the other detainees? with any complaints or injuries as far as you know at that stage? No, the last days of Dr. Neil Eggett were the worst days of his life, I think. The worst days of his life, what I've seen, the, the, the marks, and uh, also seeing him on the 25th there. So I just thought of him because uh, it was him at that point in time who was uh, extremely, really tortured. And, so you did not at any stage inform from the passage the other uh, detainees <coughs> about the death of uh, Dr. Neil Laggett? No, that's why I've said I only spoke to Tozamil, I think, Tozamil Kota, to highlight to him, to say, I believe that Neil Laggett is dead. And, the, and the, the, on the, the first, that Friday, did you get served your breakfast? Food? Yes, we were served. And during that stage, was there any discussions that you speak to the uniformed policeman about what happened the previous night? No, you don't usually speak. They don't even answer you, even if you speak and so on. But did you ask them? Yeah. We, I'm always, uh, I always ask questions. I like to ask, I like to talk, I like to engage. But as you engage, it just keeps quiet. And but they're trained in that way. That morning, did things go back to normal? Did the people go out for uh, interrogation later on? No, morning? there was no interrogation. There was uh, no exercises. On the 5th of February? On the time when Emil died. On the 5th of February, there were yes. no exercises on that day? No, no exercises. At what stage were you actually, your gut feeling in relation to Dr. Agate confirmed? At what, when did somebody inform you Dr. Neil Agate was? I don't know how I heard it. I think it was late afternoon with the last food that uh, I heard that Neil Eggett had passed on. Passed on. And in, the, in other words, through the whole day, from that morning when you served your breakfast to the late meal, uh, basically nothing happened there in the cells. Yes, but it was tense. What I mean by tense, we never even been speaking to each other. We're not coming out of the cells. We're still, we're, 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 we're still in our cells. Yeah. And, and did you speculate, did you speak to other people through the toilet system to find out what do you know, what do you know, and did you see something? I said to you, it was a tense, tense, okay. tense day. Any detail you will tell you to say, we, we're not talking, you know, we're not talking. Did any person of the detainees informed you, or did you hear from any one of them? actually saw Dr. Neil Agate being carried into the cells. Nobody spoke to, 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 to me. Nobody spoke to me, even to the phone when we, were, we, go, we went to the phone, through the phone system. Nobody informed uh, me. Thank you, my lord. I've got no further questions for this witness.
Uh, uh, no, just two quick uh, aspects on the examination. Mr. Uh, in, in Gwenya, can we just confirm the location of the toilet uh, in your cell, as you recall it? Um, there was a question that, uh, that my friend put to you. Um, are you saying that the toilet was located against the wall facing the passageway, the corridor? The toilets, they were just uh, in... I saw, I saw it now, now. I saw it when we went to, to for inspection. They were not behind the, the grid. And is that they were next to the wall? Yes, the, the only question is which wall are we talking about? Are we talking about the far wall? In other words, the wall the that... Far, the far wall, the far wall. On, you, the, you, you, on the corner, like, on the corner, the far wall. Are you talking about the, uh, the, the far wall, in other words, the wall that would be fronted on the parking lot outside? Yes, in that level. I, it depends. You see, those who stay this side, I wouldn't know their toilets. Who stays in? Uh, yes, uh, when you're talking about the cell, you B1. mean? Yes, in B. The, the toilets were not on the side of the window; they were on the side of the wall. Okay. Um, let, let's let's, for example, take a look at, at B6. And if you're looking at B6, yes. Uh, which wall are you referring to? The one and, that and, is and, straight. And, 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 and let's remember now that there, 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 as with any room or most rooms, there, there are four walls. So are you talking about the front wall, the back wall, the wall on the left, or the wall on the right? The wall at the back. The wall at the back? Yes, sir. Um, <coughs> so the toilet would be where the, where the black dot is. Sorry. So the toilet. If you look at B6, <coughs> where would the toilet be? It would be... Uh, it may not be in that, it may be around there, but not around there yet, but it will be sticked around the wall. At the back? At the back, yeah, at the back. Now, sorry, sorry, there's this small rectangular, is that the entrance or what is it? The rectangular, the round one. No, no not the round one. That's the B6. This one. That's the, this one. That's the door with the... Uh, that's a door with, what do you call it, with where uh, a policeman can enter here and stand on the uh, iron or grid. Yes, yes. 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 You also testify as to what you could hear in relation to the... Um, Locking and closing of cell doors. Uh, and I just want you to confirm your evidence. Uh, were you saying that you would only hear when a cell door was opened or closed if that happened in the short corridor, um, uh, in other words, the short corridor between B2 and B10? No, the short corridor, if they open from uh from next to those offices because there'll be a gate here that comes uh, around here that they can do. When they open that gate also, I could hear. Yes. I, this I, gate, I, I could hear. But and Mr. That, Gwena, that's not what I'm asking okay. you. Okay. I'm not asking you about the, the gate to the entrance of the cells. Okay. I'm asking you about cell doors themselves. I could, I could hear that one. Yes. But, um, were you saying that your hearing was restricted to um, cell door noises in your own corridor? In other words, the short corridor that runs between B2 and B1 up to around B10 and B9? Yes. So if there was a cell door that uh, was opened or closed elsewhere in the complex, for example, around the corner, up and around the corner, you wouldn't hear that? No. Um, uh, Mr. Grinia. We do have a photograph of uh, one of the cells, and unfortunately we can't say for, for certain which cell it is at, at this stage. Um, uh, 
I, I, I don't think you have it. My Lord, this is the PowerPoint presentation that uh, we handle over for the inspection in loco. I don't believe it is an exhibit as yet. Um, and it is, it's not clear to me, it's, it's on page 15 of that PowerPoint presentation. Title second floor cells. I'm going to hand it up to, to the witness. Mr. Nguyenia, did, did your cell look anything like that? So this one is the second floor. Yeah, it's on page 15 of the inspections PowerPoint presentation. The one that had it in yesterday. Yeah. Uh, this one. Uh, no, no, it's, it's not the police uh, album. Uh, it was handed up at the time of the inspection. Well, I, I, I understand what they're saying. I can see what they're What page is that? Page 15. Page 15. Uh, Did your cell similar? Or was yeah. it a different configuration? Okay, that means. Yeah, it's similar. There's walls, and not there. The walls wouldn't be here. When you say walls, you, you, you mean those? Uh, the ones that are privacy. That's what we can call the privacy, privacy walls. Yeah, yes. Privacy walls, they were not there. But the question to you was whether the toilet was located facing the corridor, and you can see there's somebody standing outside in the corridor. So in this particular cell, I'm not, I'm not saying it's your cell. In this particular cell, the toilet is, in fact, against the wall facing the corridor, the passageway? Yeah, it's possible. You see what I've, I've done, I've mixed it with this wall. This uh, is the way we sit, where we put our clothes, when we take out our clothes. It's possible that it may be, because I'm mixing this, this thing with... Uh, I see. I, I, okay, so it's obviously a long time ago and your memory is... Um, yeah, because... Uh, I remember putting clothes here, yeah, but toilets were open, but uh, I did not land to a toilet here. Yeah. Uh, no, no Before his lordship proceeds, may I put a few questions on the questions? Thank you, my lord. Um, Mr. Nguyenia, I just wanted to find out, we now heard that Mr. Penta has admitted that he did assault you, he did torture you, he did degrade you. Um, Mr. Premanaidu also testified about assault and that has been admitted, as did uh, Mr. Frank Chikane. So it's highly impossible if everybody was detained on the second floor that Dr. Agat would not have been tortured. Am I correct? There's no reason why he should have been exempted. Yes, uh, yes. you are right. You testified about um, uh, the marks that you saw on Dr. Agat's hands. Yes. I, I just want to say, I just want to ask you from your experience, when you testified, you said, look, the Hessian bag was placed over your, your, your face. Yes. And there was a time that you passed out Just and then you would regain consciousness. Yes. When you had regained consciousness, can you recall when you had any marks around your neck? No, at that time, when you're passing, uh, passing out, is that bag only. Okay. That bag will make you to pass out. Right. Not um, during the time where they put electric shocks on. Okay. Is that the electric shocks, um, how the pain comes, is that it comes in every part of your body. Every part of your body. You are feeling like needles are coming out of your eyes, out of your body. You are full of blood right. and so on. So that's the type of a pain that you feel. But the question every part of your body. But the question is, around your neck, there would be no marks. They're, no, this one, uh, they're on top of you, yes. uh, kneeling on top of you yes. and pulling you. Okay. Yes. So you're suffocating. You, there's no air coming out. You are being pulled back and you are... No, they pull this back. They right. pull it. Right. And you suffocate. Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, you said that uh, you, a question was put to you about what type of police they were. You said they were private police. I take it it was not the uniform branch. When you say private police, what do you mean? I mean, uh, by private is that they were in private clothes. Okay, so... Which is special branch. Special automatic branch, okay. Mm -hmm. um, you said that uh, the time period that was put by my learned uh, friend to you, 
uh, that's just an estimate because you had no watch, am I correct? Yes, it's true. Yeah. Yes. Um, then, just the last uh, question that was put to you about the, about the time that you saw Dr. Agat when you ran into the room to go and ask him. On paragraph 21, you say, it was on the morning of Wednesday, 3rd of February, etc., etc., when I encountered Neil, he was entering the storage room where our belongings were kept. He appeared to be not walking normally. He was walking wide-legged, and I suspect that something was wrong with his private parts. So when you saw him on that Wednesday, he could not walk properly. Is that yes, what he couldn't. Nothing further for this witness. Mr. I'm just interested in finding out um, You say that uh, your suspicions tell you that uh, Dr. Agat was not killed or did not die in the cell, but somewhere else and then was brought back to the cell. Yes. Can you elaborate on that? Uh, is it, do you know whether detainees were taken out at night uh, and brought back in the morning? Um, and if so, there would there have been a record showing that they were booked out at a certain time? <laughs> were you ever taken out at night? Yes, I've been taken out at night, several times. At night? Yeah. But they cook the books. They have books, book A, book B, and so on. So yes. they'll write in the other book and they'll write on the other book. They cook books. You could see when they, you go there, there are two books here. But they have two books. Yeah. They have a proper one and they have a, another one of theirs. No. So it's also them, if uh, McPherson or the other police, they'll tell you they have two books. The name, there's a name of a captain or warrant officer, Whitehead. Yes. Did you see him around there uh, on the 4th or the 5th uh, of February? Then we be honest with you. Amal? Some uh, compelling answers being given there by Jabalani in Gwenya uh, to, to questions posed to him. Uh, he was detained at uh, John Foster Square Police Station during the time uh, of the death of uh, Dr. Neil Agat back in 1982. And he was talking about the days leading up to uh, the death of Dr. Neil Agat. And he was saying that you know, you often saw Dr. Agat passing in the corridors, but he couldn't engage with him. He didn't interact with him that much. But he said he last saw Dr. Agat on the 3rd of February, 1982. And then he said on the 4th of February, the next day, 1982, he spoke about this commotion uh, in the corridors there and also spoke about a lot of policemen moving around. He said that uh, they were not uniformed police officers. And about 10 p.m., he described for us all the windows uh, being shut, so he couldn't really see what was happening outside. And he said he had this, this gut feeling that Dr. Ackett actually died somewhere else and then brought to uh, his uh, cell. So he, he was saying that he didn't die in his cell. This, albeit speculation, but he said he had this feeling that this happened. We're going to keep a close eye on this uh, story, um, but we're also monitoring other stories as well. There's a press briefing that's going to be happening very soon at the Union Buildings. Uh, President Sildra Maposa, as well as German Chancellor.